check this out. This is the scenario we're working with today. We're three weeks into a full-on economic collapse. Everything has went to shit. Financial markets crashed and burned. Gas prices gone through the roof. Food prices, I mean, you gotta be a, yeah, a millionaire to even afford food these days. So I was up out of the rack at O Dark 30 this morning with my gear, with one mission in mind, to collect resources. Now, before the collapse, as I started to see things, you know, starting to get pretty shaky out there, I thought, hey, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to be prepared, you know? So I started paying attention to the area around me. I started to notice locations like this and marking them on a map because sites like this, these abandoned structures, can have multiple purposes, you know? Obviously, as a shelter site, as a cache location, but even beyond that, you can collect resources in the area, right? Uh, you know, for example, there's a creek over there where I can collect water. There's some abandoned vehicles over by that shed where I can siphon gasoline. Inside this house, there's probably tons of resources. So, that being said, how do I get in this place, right? This place is locked down tight, dead bolted windows, all that kind of good stuff. How do I collect water? How do I siphon gasoline? All these questions led me to build out what I'm calling my urban vulture kit. So, without further ado, let's go and have a look and see what I got inside this pack. Okay, so first things first, let's go and have a look at the pack. Now this bad boy, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably recognize this, but for those who don't, this is the ILBE Assault Pack. Now this is a standard Marine Corps issue before they upgraded to the FLIBE. Now, you guys are probably not going to believe me when I tell you this, but it's a damn truth. I picked this up back in 2007 for only $25 off a Marine who came back from deployment. And I was shocked, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I'm online looking and I stumble across some of these and they're selling for like $50, $75, some with rips and tears still in them. So I consider myself really lucky to get this that cheap. Now it's been with me ever since and I've used the crap out of it and you can see it's still in pretty damn good shape. You know, no rips or tears or any sort of damage to it. It's an excellent pack and it actually was a um, perfect choice for storing all of my tools because, you know, let's face it, I have large pieces in here, you know, bolt cutters, uh, axe, so on and so forth, and I don't need high levels of micro organization. You know, all I need is a nice big compartment here and then one big main compartment, and that's it. So, enough about the pack. Let's go ahead and have a look at what I've got inside. Up first, we're going to go ahead and talk about the intelligence and navigation module. Now these are all the components that are going to allow me to get to where I need to go, to observe the location discreetly, stuff like that. So first up, you know, got a Tika headlamp. Makes good sense, right? Because I may be moving at night, like I did today. Then I got this nice little admin pouch, another courtesy of my friend from across the pond. And in here, we got some pens, we got a compass, and then as you may have guessed, if you open it up and unzip it, we got a notepad. Then over here, I got a map of the area I plan on exploring. Obviously, I got it waterproof. And then finally, I got, I love these binoculars, Steiners. These things are really great, nice and compact. Granted, they are the cheapest pair of um, Steiners out there, but man, they are great. They're the Safari 8x22 Ultra Sharp. And retail, I got um, I got these for Father's Day actually for my wife, and they they were only um, I believe she paid ninety dollars for them on Amazon. So must have addition, a good pair of compact folding binos. Up next, let's talk cordage. Now, I stumbled on this, and you might have guessed it. I bought it on Amazon because hell, that's where I buy everything. But this is a pair of cord spool. This is a great idea. It's super cheap. I think I only paid $12 for it. And it, I got 100 feet of paracord on here, all nicely wound up. And there's a cutting edge right there. And then right here is a little clipping point for a big lighter. So let's say, you know, I'm out and about, I'm doing something. I go ahead and I peel off some of the paracord, cut it with this edge right here, then pop my lighter out like so, clean up the ends and I'm ready to go. So this is a great idea because I tell you, over the years, keeping my paracord organized and untangled has always been kind of one of those things that has annoyed the living crap out of me. So paracord spool, gotta have this. And then finally, 
I got some heavy duty zip ties. Now I picked up 200 of these broken into packs at Home Depot. I was just wandering around there and I saw these and it was like $15 for 200 of these. So I picked up and um, you know, I got three right here. I actually used two already today because the uh, camera mount on my uh, tripod broke. So it's actually zip tied right now. Hey, you gotta work with what you got, right? So um, it was nice to see my toolkit come in handy. So that's a quarters module right here. Let's go ahead and move on to what's next. Uh, let's talk water collection. First up, you guys might have guessed, we got a canteen. And this is a British military issue, canteen and canteen cup. And uh, this is another little gift from my friend across the pond. Thanks a lot, Russ. Anyways, I got this here. Then I threw in an MSR pouch. You know, these things are nice because they fold up real small. Don't take up a lot of space in your pack, but you know, when you need them, you fill them up and you can use this little hanger right here to just, you know, hang this off the side of your pack if you don't have enough room inside. Now, up next and finally, I got some goodies in this mag pouch here. I have, as you may have guessed or expected, four-way Silcock key. If you don't know about these, Find out about them, get yourself one. Next time you're in a McDonald's drive-thru or Burger King or wherever you go, uh, just pay attention to the outside of the building. You'll see some outlets there, and if you take this key right here and insert it into one of those outlets, you're gonna get water. Now this is the difference between just say a, just a res, regular residential setup where you're actually gonna have a faucet you can turn off and on. You know, this is more of a security thing where you know people don't want you know, whoever coming up to their building, turning on the faucets, getting water, so on and so forth. There's basically a, a, a recessed area in the wall that you can insert this key into, turn it, and water comes out like magic. But anyways, that's a four-way Silcock key. Then I decided to throw in some hose for siphoning purposes. Not sure exactly how this would come in handy. I did have a couple thoughts about it, but uh, I figured, hey, why not have it? If you don't use it, you don't use it, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Now, finally, I threw this in here at the last minute, and this is more of a convenience thing because, you know, nobody likes waiting around for water to uh, get clean. So you throw in one of these Micro Pure MP1 water purification tabs as you're headed back to your location, and by the time you get back home, voila, you got clean water. All right, let's go ahead and talk breaching tools. Up first is my customized Cold Steel Rifleman's Hawk. This thing is an awesome little tomahawk. As you can see, I've customized it a bit, chopped it down to size, stained the handle, and um, this thing is great, you know, because first of all, I got this hammerhead right here, and I can use this to knock off padlocks potentially. I can use it obviously for hammering, and um, when I'm not doing that, I got a nice heavy duty cutting edge, for processing wood, splitting skulls, you know, breaking into areas, whatever. Now this, combined with this heavy duty pry bar, is gonna get me access to pretty much any residential location out there. If you guys have ever used a pry bar on a door before like I have, you know that it's very, very easy to get in there. Man, once you get this thing wedged in there and you start prying and applying some leverage, no problem. And if you're having a little issues, break this out to really get this hammered in there nice and deep and you're gonna get in through any door I guarantee it now up next I got this pair of bolt cutters purchased on Amazon now I'm gonna be real with you these are not gonna cut much in the way of bolt because of their size now obviously I had to have something to fit in this pack so you know the amount of leverage and the size of these jaws maybe is gonna cut a small very skinny padlock but not much beyond that but the reason why I have this in here is for cutting chain link fences primarily. Now, what I like to do when I do that is, you know, I'll find the post to the chain link fence and I'll cut up from the bottom along the edge of the post. And it keeps the cuts very discreet. I can roll up the fence, come up underneath there, get through, push it back down, and unless you're really looking for the cuts, you're not gonna see them. Final addition here is this lock pick set basic five lock picks and um, this was hmm, 
trying to think, $14, $15 purchase from southorg.com, you should check them out. They have pretty much every single type of lock picking device out there. Because the thing is, if you think about it, sure, you know, you can use this to do what you need to do and get in, but that might make a little too much noise, and that's where the lock picks is going to come in and save your ass and keep things nice and quiet and discreet. You can get in and get out without anybody even knowing that you had to you know, break through a door or what have you. So this is a real discreet way to get in and get what you need and get back out. So up next, this is what I'm calling my personal protection module. And this very basic, I have a pair of work gloves. Obviously, you know, if you're dealing with, uh, you know, sharp surfaces and metal and stuff like that, you're not going to want to get your hands all cut up. That's the last thing you want. So heavy duty pair of work gloves is going to take care of you. And then I threw in the Shemog. I thought, you know, maybe if I'm in a, um, you know, an abandoned factory or something like that where there's asbestos fumes, I can, you know, fairly well wrap up and cover my face so I'm not breathing a bunch of nasty stuff. But, you know, granted, I could actually get a dedicated mask for that. And I've kind of thought about that. That's on the list. And also, another item I could add to this, maybe not entirely necessary, is a set of, um, eye protection, you know, a good pair of safety goggles might not be a bad idea. So that's on the list. If you guys think of anything else, hit me up in the comments. So up next, let's talk gasoline collection. I got this 1000 milliliter, 35 fluid ounce fuel bottle right here. I thought this is a great idea because this can fit in my pack because let's be honest, I'm not interested in toting around a gas jug or trying to hang some, some, some gas can off the back of my pack. I can thread this down real nice and tight. It's not going to leak. Stores inside the pack, and it's just um, perfect, perfect size. And then, how am I going to get this gasoline? Well, you can go with the old school route of using, you know, let's say a line of hose and siphoning yourself with your mouth. Now, that sure is going to probably work on older vehicles, but newer vehicles have that screen in the tank that's going to prevent that from happening. So I tried to figure out a way to get around this and build out a comprehensive siphon kit. And then I just stumbled on this. This is the gas tapper. And this is literally everything that you need to collect gasoline from older vehicles, sure, and the newer ones. You got this line of real heavy rigid hose that you're going to thread down in the tank and you're going to follow that up with the hose from the gas tapper. You, and using this bulb, you're going to be able to get gasoline from any vehicle out there. Hell, I was out and about last weekend and I found a freaking boat abandoned in the middle of nowhere. And I, and I kind of pushed it a little bit and I heard gasoline sloshing around in there. So, you know, abandoned cars, boats, what have you, you're going to be able to get what you need using the gas tapper. And of course, I'll have a link up for that as well. Okay, on to the cutting modules, I'm calling it, because, hell, I couldn't come up with a better name. But anyways, what we got in here, we got the good old trusty Baco Laplander, the first folding saw I bought. And it's been with me ever since, for, I don't know, about three, four years I've had this. So, obvious addition. Then we got some wire cutters and wire strippers, you know? Makes good sense, gotta have that. And then finally, we got this little hacksaw right here, picked up at Home Depot for about eight bucks. And you, as you can see, I've already used it, and it's come in real handy, so. Those are the three items in the cutting module. If you guys can think of a better name for that, let me know. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some way to store the stuff that you collect while you're out and about foraging. I thought, why not throw in a dump pouch? I was rummaging through my gear and I found this. And I totally forgot I even had it, you know, and you guys who are gear whores like me probably have the same thing going on where you're digging around stuff and you're like, holy crap, I didn't realize I had this. This might come in handy. So I've held on to this for the years and this is great because, you know, let's say I'm out foraging, so I see some wild edibles, I can just drop them right in here. I don't have to take my pack off and I can just keep on moving. That's just one example. You can throw other little small odds and ends on here that you see. And then finally, we got some 55 gallon trash bags, common sense edition, plus some Ziploc. Okay, you've seen it. That's my Urban Vulture kit. I want to hear what you guys think about it. Me personally, I think it gives me a really good working foundation of tools that I need to collect resources from locations just like this. Now, one thing I'll say before we end this video is I strongly believe that as a community of survivalists and preppers, whatever you want to call us, we really need to focus more on the urban survival side of the game versus the wilderness survival. Now, 
hey, I'm not saying that wilderness survival is not a great skill set to build, but you know, me, like 80% of America and probably more, lives in or near urban centers like this. So you gotta, you gotta train for the environment that you live in. Train for the environment that you plan on surviving in. And that's why I did this video. That's why I took the time and effort to put together this toolkit. Hell, it took me about two months because, let's be honest, there's no grid down situation. You know, it's business as usual out here. So it's, it's a lot of this stuff is theory based. You can't really, I can't simulate a grid down event, right? So I have no way to, to test this stuff out in real world scenarios. So I want to hear what you guys think. Maybe you guys are putting together one of these kits yourself. You can tell me stuff I can put in, stuff I can take out. Just hit me up in the comments and tell me what you think. So that's all I got to say. Until next time, you guys know the drill. Get out there and train and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.